Hi everybody, Ace of Hearts Fox here, and welcome to another Fursuit Friday video! In today's video, we're gonna go over my top 10 furry movies. Now, I tried to not just pick Disney movies, I wanted this to be a well-rounded list. For the most part, this list is about finding 10 furry movies that I think everybody should watch. And on that note, let's get started, because number 10 is a Disney movie, Robin Hood. It's a pretty typical Robin Hood story. He steals from the rich to feed the poor. The current king of England, Richard, is away on the Crusades, so his younger brother, Prince John, is in charge. Only problem is, he's taxing the bejesus out of people. Taxes! Beautiful, lovely taxes! Ah -ha. Ah -ha. Now, it's not the biggest or most spectacular Disney movie. It's definitely a lot more down-to-earth. But there's something really warm and nostalgic about that 70s animation feel. And while it's not always the most fast-paced movie, it definitely has its moments in dialogue and humor, and it even has stunning visuals at some times. Also, it's just fun to see how many times they switch from people hands back to animal paws. So overall, Robin Hood is a solid example of early furry animation. Oodle lolly, golly what a film! Coming in at number 9 on our list is Balto. Very, very, very loosely based off an actual dog, Balto stars Kevin Bacon as a half-wolf, half-dog hybrid Balto. So he's basically Kevin Bacon's persona. So Balto's in love with a local dog named Jenna, whose owner is this adorable little plot device named Rosie. And would you know it, Rosie is sick with the tuberculosis. And I guess there's a blizzard that's preventing all the boats, planes, and trains from getting to Alaska. So their only choice is to have a sled dog race to see which team's the fastest to deliver the medicine. Wouldn't the time spent on a dog race actually be better spent trying to deliver the medicine? I don't know, man. I don't own a husky. Oh yeah, also the main antagonist is this guy, Steel. To me, Steel is a really terrifying antagonist and a hilarious antagonist, mostly because he's just a dog. Like, he's literally just a dog. Like, he's an evil dog, but he's still just a dog. I'm not even kidding, that's just the whole character. Also, this sounds kind of silly, but one of my favorite things about this movie is that it is not a musical. Don't get me wrong, I love musicals, but a lot of kids' movies tend to rely on musical numbers to keep the audience's attention. Whereas Balto has energetic animation, good pacing, and Kevin Bacon's voice. Like, I'm sorry to bring that up again, but it's just one of those casting choices that doesn't immediately come to mind, but somehow just works. Overall, Balto is a fun addition to any movie dog team. And now, number 8. All Dogs Go to Heaven. All Dogs Go to Heaven is a 1989 animated musical comedy by animation genius Don Bluth. Set in 1930s New Orleans, this movie follows the story of Charlie B. Barkin. Yes, that's his actual name. He dies and ends up withdrawing from his spot in heaven to go back down to Earth. So after he comes back to Earth, he teams up with his best friend Itchy and an orphan named Anne-Marie. It's pretty hard to talk about the plot any more than this without giving stuff away, so definitely check it out. It's got solid musical numbers, a nostalgic animation style, and a really fun, unique story, so it's worth checking out. I mean, you got a German Shepherd voiced by Burt Reynolds. Do you need much more reason than that? And now, coming in at number 7 on our list, we have an American Tale. Another Don Bluth classic, An American Tale is an animated musical adventure family comedy drama. Did you cover enough genres there, Don? It was released November 21st, 1986 and was incredibly successful at the box office, actually becoming the highest grossing non-Disney animated film at the time. The original music score ended up being nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar and even won two Grammys. The story follows Feifel Mouskowitz. He and his family are immigrating to the United States to make a better life for themselves. One thing I notice when they're on the boat is this is a really approachable caricature of immigration around the turn of the century. And honestly, it's one of the only animated kids films I've seen to address this time period and this issue. Much like other Don Bluth movies, the animation is gorgeous and the style is honestly not like most kids movies at the time. To sum it up, there's a reason that it beat Disney at the box office that year. And there's certainly a reason why it earned a spot on this list. And coming in at number 6 is a personal favorite of mine, Cats Don't Dance. I could honestly go on and on about this movie. Anyone I know or anyone that hangs out with me can tell you that I love movie references. And boy howdy, this movie has so many references to classic movies and film. Although Cats Don't Dance actually didn't do very well in the box office, it definitely found a second life when it was released on home video. Our story follows Danny. He's a small town cat with big dreams of making it as a movie star in Hollywood. Much like 
like a lot of other people that moved to Hollywood during the golden era of film, he realized there were exponentially more broken dreams than realized ones. What he sees is all the animals have given up on their dreams and just settled for whatever roles they can get. So Danny sets out on a quest to revive everyone's spark and their willingness to do the things they love. It's got some lively, colorful animation, and the dialogue is incredible. The expressiveness of the art style really emphasizes the hilarious back and forth kind of Abbott and Costello style pacing. Everything from the character archetypes to the musical numbers provides a corny but fun wink to the old golden age of Hollywood. Also using the animals as a possible allegory for prejudice in the film industry is kind of an interesting theme to tackle in what's otherwise a totally innocent kids movie. If you haven't seen it though, check out Cats Don't Dance, you won't be disappointed. Coming in at number 5 on our list is The Secret of Nim. Based on the 1971 novel Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, Don Bluth directed this rather unique departure from the typical animated children's movie. The film stars a timid, widowed field mouse named Mrs. Brisby. Apparently they had licensing and trademarking concerns regarding the name Frisbee, so they changed it for the movie. Like, that's the actual story. They were scared they were gonna get sued by whoever makes Frisbees. So her son Timmy falls ill with pneumonia. That's right. This movie is all about an adorable field mouse, and little Timmy is sick. So she consults the great owl, and he tells her to seek out the rats for help. I'm 99% sure I'm butchering the story right now because it's been so long since I've seen this movie. But one thing I do love about the main character is that she's not a brave hero. She's scared. But honestly, that's kind of how any of us would be in the situation she's in. She's scared, but she's so determined to reach her goal that it doesn't matter what danger she has to face. And honestly, I think that's what makes the characters seem more human. And the movie as a whole has actually some really unique traits that very much earn its spot on this list. For one thing, it's placed in a fantasy setting, which is a popular genre in literature for these types of animal characters, but not something that was often covered in animated films. Sure, you have your typical princess stories, but in anthropomorphic art, it's honestly kind of an overlooked genre. Not only that, but this plays out as a very dramatic motion picture. Like sure, there's comic relief, but typically that humor plays a much bigger role in an animated kids movie, while usually the dramatic portions tend to take a back seat. And this movie completely flips that and has some pretty eerie visuals at times. This is definitely an interesting jump in the direction of a more straightforward adventure film, as opposed to being the normal route of a happy-go-lucky kids movie. Not that there's anything wrong with being a happy-go-lucky kids movie, but it is fun to see how this plays out in a much more serious tone. Either way, it's no secret that this earns a spot on this list. And now, coming in at number 4, The Cat Returns. The Cat Returns is directed by Studio Ghibli, the same people that brought you several critically acclaimed movies including Spirited Away, My Neighbor Totoro, Princess Mononoke, and many, many more. This was actually the only movie on the list that I hadn't seen before making this video. So I watched it the other day, and I was blown away. It has a gorgeous visual style, and they did a fantastic job with the English voice casting. I mean, they got Tim Curry as the Diabolical Cat King, and they got Carrie Elways as the Baron. And I mean... Cats! <laughs> There's so many cats, and it's just adorable. Like, half the time I couldn't pay attention to what was going on, just because the cats are so cute. I mean, think about it. There's a team of animators out there where their whole job during the whole production time of this movie was just to draw cats, doing people things, and walking how they walk, and talking how they talk. Also, it's kind of just a breath of fresh air from the Disney style of cartoons. Even movies like Balto that are totally not a Disney movie tend to copy the style just a little bit. So it's kind of cool to just watch a big animated movie that's in a completely different visual style. So if you haven't already, check out The Cat Returns. It'll have you returning to it many times. <laughs> Uh, and now coming in at number three on our list, The Lion King. This Disney animated classic has everything. Stellar voice casting, music by Elton John, and that blue screen at the beginning of a home movie where the guy has that golden voice. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. Yeah, that one. If you haven't seen it already, the story focuses on Simba, the son of the current king of Pride Rock, Mufasa. This film is a definitive high point in Disney animation where it really held weight with its grandiose animation and fantastic storytelling. Also, there's a bird voiced by Mr. Bean. Of all the classic Disney movies, I particularly enjoy this one because it's not animals doing people things. 
It's animals dealing with animal things in the way that people would. Not to mention the music just ranges from fun to epic to romantic, and when you have something as cool as Darth Vader's lion ghost in the sky, you can definitely feel the love tonight. Needless to say, The Lion King is a classic that's essential to any furry video collection. And now, number two on our list, Zootopia. I mean, did you guys really think I was going to do this list and not talk about Zootopia? For those of you who haven't seen it yet, it follows the story of Judy Hopps in her pursuit to make it as a big city cop. She runs into a clever con man named Nick Wilde, and they go on an adventure to solve a big case. I'd give away more about the plot, but honestly, the back and forth between them before they're doing the big case is a lot of fun. Visually, Zootopia is amazing. It covers such a vast array of details, from their massive environments, all the way down to the several different types of hair and fur that they drew and programmed onto each different animal species. The amount of work that the animators took to properly modeling the insane number of different species that live in the city of Zootopia is just incredible. On top of that, the characters have a lot of dimension, the humor is pretty enjoyable for people of all ages, and it's just a really fun motion picture. It's also worth noting that Zootopia lacks the large musical numbers that are typical of a major Disney animated feature, and I honestly think that's for the best. I feel like the story and characters are so well developed and cleverly written that they don't need to rely on musical numbers. So if you haven't seen Zootopia yet, then as Shakira's persona would say, try everything. And now, the number one spot on our list goes to... Fantastic Mr. Fox! I promise I'm not just biased to this movie because I'm a fox. Honestly, this movie earns its number one spot on my list because it's just so endlessly rewatchable. Like, whenever I get a hankering to watch something furry or fox-related, that's the first movie that comes to my mind. The script is witty and fun and is masterfully executed by the cast. I mean, when you get George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Owen Wilson, Bill Murray, Willem Dafoe, and so many other talented actors all under the direction of Wes Anderson, you're definitely gonna get something special. It's based on a children's book by Roald Dahl, the same author of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and it follows a charismatic fox that steals food from farms for a living. The three big farmers in the area play the main antagonists named Boggus, Bunce, and Bean. The three of them are collectively fed up with Mr. Fox's thievery and attempt to kill him. Yep, that's the plot. That's the plot of one of my favorite movies, they want to kill the fox. I would love to show you guys some of the really over-the-top ways they do this, but honestly, it's just so much fun to watch that I encourage you to see it yourself. It's also worth noting that the entire movie is 100% traditional stop motion. There are no computer animated effects, and I think that's just honestly incredible considering the amount of content that they managed to pack into short periods of time, especially when there are moments that could have passed with considerably less effort. For example, take a look at this clip when Bean is getting constantly outsmarted by Mr. Fox. visual effects in this movie could have easily been done by computers, so their choice to continue with traditional stop motion is just that much more impressive. Something that also catches my eye every time I watch this movie is that the camera movements and angles are very consistent of the characteristics of a live action film. That's just something I really enjoy because you get really immersed into the miniature scale of the animal world. And then you have moments where the film reminds you of how tiny that world is compared to our own. It's got gorgeous color palettes, unique animation and art style, and a heartwarming soundtrack ranging from everything from Burl Ives to the Beach Boys to the Rolling Stones. And it's all topped off with star-studded voices to bring the diverse cast of animal characters to life. If I had to give this movie a rating, it would be quote-unquote fantastic. So thanks so much for watching my top 10 furry movies, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have any furry movies that I missed on this list? Leave them in a comment down below! Also, if you want to directly help the channel, I have my Patreon and merch store links in the description below. So thanks again for watching, everybody! My name's Ace of Hearts Fox, and I will see you all in the next video!